best home court advantages in college basketball. The Wildcats since the start of 2013-2014 have been dominant. Here at McHale Center, they try to continue that run tonight as the Big 12 foe is in Pac-12 country as you're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. The Baylor Bears come to Tucson to take on the Arizona Wildcats. And for Baylor, they've been a strong team in non-conference play recently as well. So two teams that really excel this time of the year hooking up here tonight in Tucson, along with the Hall of Famer, Bill Walton. I'm Bill. Two L's. This is Roxy with one X. And we are fresh into Tucson from Albuquerque with three U's. And it's Saturday night. We're closing in on the midnight hour. We have got tremendous basketball on tap for you guys. And it starts with the Arizona Wildcats. Fantastic program over the years. And now a new and rising star. Brandon Randolph from Yonkers in his second year. He runs the floor. He's got the great footwork in transition. Not sure where Europe comes in on that one. The catch and shoot capabilities. But the ability to finish in the basket area. This guy is a gift from the gods athletically. He is spectacular. This season, he's averaging 17 points a game. Last year, he averaged like 33 points a game. Hardly ever played. And on the other side, it's the king. King McClure for the Baylor Bears. Arr, coming in here growling. They're physical. They're tough. They got a great coach. They are a special, special team and program. We are in for a treat tonight underway here at McHale, spelled with a K. What else you got for me with the letters of the alphabet? We're going to get there soon. I can't see a thing. All these people are standing up in front of me. So you decide to stand up and block everybody's view behind? <laughs> Sort of like at a dead show. <laughs> That's true. That's the worst place to be at a dead show is right behind Bill. See? Look. Well, you can't see when you sit down. <laughs> We're trying to help the people at home enjoy the game. So an offensive foul on Baylor and Mario Kegler, the transfer from Mississippi State. One of the truly special athletes. This is a big, powerful, physical team. Young team. The youngest team in all the Power 5 schools. Only three returning guys. Nine newcomers on this Baylor team and five transfers, including a couple of Division I transfers. Zone defense here for the Bears. Packing it in, challenging the Wildcats to come into their den. Shot clock inside, 10 for Chase Jeter. Lost it, Makai Mason oh. was off to the races, but fouled before he could get free by Chase Jeter. Chase and the first Jeter. against Arizona. The great coach for the Baylor Bears. This guy has got it all. Son of Homer. Older brother of Dana and Bryce. The third winningest family of basketball coaches in the history of the known world. And what a spectacular human being. And the all-time winningest coach in Baylor history. It's his 500th game tonight as the Baylor head coach. 16 years. Unheard of in basketball today. Unless you're talking about Jim Beheim. And you're talking another about offensive Dave. foul. Not a good start offensively. Sean Miller. Whoa. Fantastic what he's done here now in his 10th year with the Wildcats. You know what's amazing 29 about... 29 years overall as a coach, though. His stay here at Arizona, this is his 10th season. No. He's lost in those 10 years just 14 home games. That's it. And he lost five of those his first year. And you know what these great fans will say? That's 10 too many. <laughs> We're still looking for our first well, field goal attempt of the night, believe it or not. <laughs> by either team... There's one. Let it fly. Just off the mark. King McClure the oh. rebound for Baylor. These people are never going to sit down here tonight. Is they will, I promise you, once Baylor scores. This is like an aerobics class at the Y. Tristan Clark rattles it out. Here comes Brandon Wilson. Push the ball. Arizona. Get to the hope. Get to the hole and dump it into Chase Jeter, who's been playing spectacular basketball. And a foul. Another it's on foul. Tristan Clark. Oh. His first already three against Baylor. Boy, We're not even two minutes in. It, if you package the start of this game with the end of Villanova, Kansas, people would say, I thought this was a game of running and jumping and sweating and passing and shooting and dribbling. Oh, my. A rough start for Baylor. Three fouls already and two of them on Mario Kegler. Not the deepest team in the land, but that's a deep three just off the mark. Justin Coleman a little bit off. And it goes out of bounds to Baylor. Justin Coleman, a fifth-year transfer from Alabama and from Samford. Now, those are both in Alabama, right? That's correct. Okay. 
And he's come all the way to Arizona here. Arizona, the sixth largest state in the union. You enjoying your Saturday night, Roxy? So far, I'm looking for a little bit more offense. You agree? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lob inside. Now that's and the first point of the night, Mario Kegler for Baylor. Mark, Vit Mike, Mark Vital. I think that's how you say it. Vital, yes. Vital? Okay. See, now everybody's sitting down, Bill. You good? Okay. Well, I like getting up and down. Have you ever been to a Springsteen concert? I have been to a Springsteen concert. I want him as my aerobics teacher. And Mario Kegler the rebound. Push the ball there. Makai Mason. Contact. Whoa. The score. shot you goes. Score that. And Makai Mason wave it off. And no. it's an offensive okay. foul, a charge on Mason. The grad transfer from Yale. I just don't understand. It's the first grad transfer in the history of Baylor's terrific program. And now, please, the guy jumps in the air and the guy runs underneath him. A guy who's bigger and stronger. E-Man Acott is a big, strong dude. A little old Makai Mason. That's a terrible call. Here's Chase Jeter inside. Please. Up and under, and another foul on Baylor. That's five fouls on Baylor, and we haven't even played three minutes. Mark Vidal called for his first. What's the record for the most fouls ever committed in the first two minutes and 50 seconds of a game on Saturday night played at the midnight hour? At McHale Center? At McHale Center. I think we have the record. I love being part of history. <laughs> There's nothing really like it. I much prefer the positive sides of history. One more coming for Jeter, the transfer from Duke, coming off a career-high 19 in their loss at Alabama last Sunday. So like bears, right? Okay. They never knew there were bears in Texas. Have you found a bear in Texas before? No, I have not seen one. Tough turnover there. In transition, Brandon Williams with a quick hand throw it down. And Jeter the finish. Chase Arizona Jeter. finally on the board. Chase Jeter. The best student on the team. Carries a 3.7 GPA in economics. He's going to graduate early. He had the early years at Duke, but now he's here at Arizona. Following really in the footsteps of Caleb Tarzuski, another careless turnover here. Scott Drew is beside himself, pulling his hair out on the bench over there. His zone defense here. This will keep the score low. It's interesting, Bill, because they're playing man-to-man. -man. No, they're not. They're playing... Bit Daniel Acott the miss and Kegler the rebound. Kegler. This guy's been dunking since the sixth grade. Not another offensive foul. And it is an offensive foul. Another okay. turnover and disastrous start for Baylor. That one's on Tristan Clark. He's got two. Kegler has two. And we're not even four minutes into this game. Can we start the game over? I think Scott Drew would like to considering and, and, the fouls are and, mounting and for And just take team. a big deep breath. Maybe play a Bruce Springsteen song. You know, tonight's the last night of his run there at the Walter Kerr Theater in New York City. What's your favorite Springsteen song? The next one I hear. But 236 shows or something like that. You know what could get this game going is maybe a little Born to Run. Or Born to Put the Whistle in Your Pocket. Right now or we're stuck with Badlands, I guess. Oh, you're sharp. I hang around you. And a turnover by Arizona, but recovering Emmanuel yeah, Acott for the Wildcats. Just like you draw it up. Give it to the other team. Hope they drop it back in your lap for the layup. Eman Acott has completely changed his body type, nutrition, working with Chris Rounds. He's lost about 30 pounds. Absolutely looking spectacular out there. Fifth consecutive start for Acott after coming off the bench the first six games for Arizona. Arizona looks so much better than they did in Maui. We had him over there. Oh, the follow by Flo Thamba for the Bears. Flo Thamba from the Congo. Dikembe Mutombo, one of his mentors. Just getting started. 6'10 freshman out there. They got two backup guys in the front court. Matthew Mayer. He'll be in there pretty soon. Mayer or Meyer? This is my first it's Meyer game. It's Meyer? Yes. How do you tell the difference? Because I asked him. Driving to the basket, King McClure the miss, and the rebound, Brandon Williams saves it. Here comes Arizona. I just couldn't get over the fact how much he looks like Larry Bird from high school. Except his hair is a little bit darker than Larry Bird. Acott, a corner three. Just the fifth three of the season for Emmanuel Acott. 
Neither of these teams are great three-point shooting teams. This is going to be a grind-out affair. The, the, the speech that Scott Drew gave to his Bears this morning is absolutely spectacular. Here's the King trying to duplicate King James. Here comes Justin Coleman for Arizona. How many guys do you know named King? Rattles out with King Rice. King Rice, okay, the Carolina point guard coach, yeah. for Dean Smith at UNC. Yes. Now he's the head coach at Monmouth. And then there's King James, Lakers' big win tonight at Charlotte. That makes the Walton family happy. Big numbers. Go Lakers. This guy, LeBron, put him back in. You think he's good? I think he's really good. But Kai Mason Beautiful. with a three to tie the game. This guy, Mason, when he was at Yale, you know, he never really practices anymore. He's got a bad ankle. And now a foul called in Devontae Bandu of Baylor. Wow. What a start here tonight. Mikhail, the players program, the numbers back it up. Here we go, Saturday night. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Heineken. Enjoy Heineken responsibly. Bear Down House owned by Clayton Ribido and Kate Marquez in attendance. 69th Annual Festival of Lights, the holiday season in Tucson. Shine the light. Tied at seven, Baylor in Arizona here in Tucson tonight. And Baylor, this is a whole new team for Scott Drew. He's got nine newcomers on the squad this season. Lost Manu Lacant, Terry Mastin, also Joel Luchuil. Yeah, they got a lot of guys. They lost their four top scorers from last year. Nuni Omat as They're, well. One of them's in Israel. Three of them are in the G League for the Clippers and the Brooklyn Nets. But they're reloading here, and what a program. The transfers who have come in, Kegler, Mason, Gillespie, Allen, and Bandu, for those are the who are visually impaired. <laughs> But since 2005, Scott Drew, that guy has graduated 44 of his 47 seniors. That is awesome. Including one of his players graduating today as King McClure received his degree today. Obviously could not attend the ceremony back in Waco, but oh, why King not? McClure, because he was here with his team. Vince Carter did it in the NBA play, seventh game of the NBA playoffs against Philadelphia. King McClure graduating today, health, kinesiology, and leisure studies. So adding to that great list of graduates for Scott Drew at Baylor and those fourth-year seniors. One more for Justin Coleman. This guy, Justin Coleman. It, it, Coach Miller, he loves Justin Coleman. He, he loves the leadership. He loves the vision. He loves the fact that... His decision making coming down on the break when he's got Williams and Randolph and Acott out there running the floor. This Arizona. is going to be a very good Arizona team. They're coming together. They're growing. They're rebounding better. They've got good depth. And Sean Miller, now 50 years old, is finding the rotations that work for him. They're already in the bonus, and they're going to be for the rest Whoa. of the first half as a corner three is way Whoa. off by freshman Jared Butler. Watch your face, please. You ever had your... Face or hand broken on a rebound just because the ball was shot so poorly? That has never happened to me. Randolph missing the runner. Here comes Baylor. I don't recommend it. It's, I'm sorry, take it. It's happened to you. Too many times. Every bone in both hands have been broken. 14 broken noses. 10 times had my front teeth knocked out. Butler again from deep. Look at the rebound. Mark Vidal for Baylor. Vidal, Kegler, Clark, big. Tough, physical, rough, and the speech that Scott Drew gave this morning in practice, he said, look, we're going to be the toughest, baddest Bears in the land. We are come to play physical tonight. Foul off the ball against Arizona Thursday. The college basketball game of the night on ESPN2. at 7 Eastern, number 11, Texas Tech, takes on Zion Williamson at number 2 Duke at Madison Square Garden. The first meeting between Tech and Duke. You can always catch it on the ESPN app from anywhere. Are the other guys going to play too, or is it just going to be Zion? I'm assuming he'll have his teammates with him. Well, well, I hope so. How about Duke and some great stars like Zion and Cam and RJ, spelled RJ. Trey Jones. That guy's good. I really love that guy. What a terrific team. Have you seen Duke this year? Not in person, but I've watched him on TV. Wow, they are fun. 
and they play a fast, skilled, up-tempo game, shooting the ball, attacking. Some of them play above the rim. Whoa. Reverse from Flo Thamba is off, and the loose ball hustling is vital to keep it alive for Baylor. And a fresh shot clock for the Bears. Offense is going to be the key to this game. If anybody can make a shot, if anybody can get hot, both teams will give you everything they have defensively, but at the end of the day, offense wins. Van Du up and under, gotcha. shot blocked Whoa. by Randolph. And the rebound. Bring it out, bring it out. <laughs> Devontae Van Du missing everything, and Arizona clears. Ira Lee, one of my favorites. Justin Coleman, the kick out. Ball movement if you're the Wildcats. Brandon Whoa. Randolph to Whoa. step back. What a talent. What a comet just searing across the smoking crater. That's my mind. Got to talk to his mom, Robin, who's always here in attendance. Just what a family. And, and the pride and joy that that family is living right now with the success of their young Brandon Randolph. He's averaging over 17 points a game as a corner three from Jared Butler for Baylor. Well, last year, Brandon couldn't even get in the game. I mean, they had all, all the guys on the team got drafted in the NBA, including the number one guy, DeAndre Ayton, two years in a row for the Conference of Champions having the number one player. Last year, they had the top. Last and he year, just the, got the contract from the Knicks. What a great deal for Alonzo. Whoa, some of these shots not even close. Here comes Jared Butler for Baylor. And he lost yeah. his footing. Push the ball. Don't wait. In transition. Throw it up over the top. Ryan, Ryan Luther, Luther missing a three. And a oh. foul. Ira Lee goes over the back. Don't call that foul. Man, with all these whistles, I need a nap. Speaking of taking a nap, it's after your bedtime, Bill. Welcome to World's Next. But it's Saturday night. I need help, please. Will somebody let me sleep? Somebody, please help me. I no. I need everything, please. Do you want to come I haven't out? slept in forever. I can't even remember the last time I did. So these are the so, University of Arizona home pods. Home pods? Yeah. And what are they for? For sleeping and napping. Sleeping classes. during school. Yes. Not during the lecture itself. Not during the lecture itself. Just like not during the basketball game. Correct. Right. This, right. But this allows you to rejuvenate, exactly. to regroup, and get yeah. started again. That's right. Well, let's go to the pods. Okay. Look at this. How cool. Can I go in? Yeah. I never sleep. I never get to do anything. It's just work, 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 work. Oh, yeah. man. Oh. They're about seven feet tall, so oh. you can get in comfortably. Oh. The students can also charge their laptops and cell phones oh. as they can. Oh, thank you. Nice job. You're done. Done. I'm healed. Let's go. It's time to play. <laughs> oh my, Nisha, what an angel. She saved me. I was wandering aimlessly in the desert today, stumbled across a new grove of sable palms, and then I was just on the edge and I fell over. And there she was with the pod, with the, with the home pod. The keys to a good night's sleep, regular schedule. Don't nap in the afternoon or evening. Develop a bedtime routine. And then leave your laptop and your cell phone on your desk. The temperature of your room is comfortable. And then avoid large meetings and caffeine close to bedtime. So I'm guilty of all of those. Fallon, Ira Lee. Can, I'm shocked. Can you get the offenses to wake up from the nap that they're in? <laughs> Why, well, this is a fantastic defensive struggle. Strategic chess confrontation here. Scott Drew, Sean Miller, two of the fabulous young coaches in all the land. Matthew Meyer way off, and then a foul underneath. That's now 16 fouls on Arizona, and the first on Ryan Luther. 10.09 to go first half, Arizona by one. Wildcats just four for 12 from the field, one of six from three, while Baylor's turned it over seven times already in the game. 
And they're out rebounding Arizona 15 to 5. Wow. Mario Kegler at the line. And that's something Sean Miller, Bill, wasn't happy with after their game against Alabama last Sunday. He was really frustrated with their performance. And he called it their worst performance of the season in the Where, loss in against Alabama. Alabama. Said the rebounding was awful, their transition defense was terrible, and that's a couple things that really cost them the game. Come on, they got out of they got out of Alabama without having their bus set on fire. Ira Lee with his first point tonight's pass from which is, Brandon Williams. Which is now the standard for all Pac-12 teams who play in the state of Alabama. To leave without your bus being set on fire. <laughs> Mike Hopkins. Nothing course, like the home that court was tough for the Huskies when they went to Auburn. Send it back. Out of bounds. Smith. Last touch by Baylor. Against the press, you double team up that high, you don't leave anybody in the basket area. You're going to give up that dunk every time. You know what today is? Today is December 15th. Yeah, National Cat Herders Day. National Cat Herders Day? Herders Day, Day yes. I'm <laughs> really big at that. I've got a lot of experience. So you herd cats when you're not busy yeah. annoying me and Dave. Who? Beautiful. Brandon Williams show. a three. Brandon Williams, the freshman from Encino, California. So much promise, so much talent. This guy had a structural congenital defect in his knee, missed his junior year of high school. They had to surgically repair it. He's all fine now. Though he didn't practice yesterday, cautionary for Arizona. Just he banged knees in practice the other day, and they played it cautiously, but of course he's good to go tonight. But Kai Mason doesn't really practice at all. He had that 31-point game against Baylor just a few years ago in the NCAA tournament. When Yale knocked off Baylor. Wow, a 5-12 deal. Beat him by four points up in Providence. There is Makai Mason off the loose oh, ball and beautiful. sticks it. And he's played just one game the last two seasons because of the coming ankle. in at Yale, and Yale doesn't allow red shirts, and you don't get a fifth year in the Ivy League, so he was looking for somewhere else to play. One of our children faced that issue. Had to take a year off from school. He's and doing, a turnover by Baylor in the backcourt. They give it back to Arizona. Nate's doing just fine. Yeah, he's doing okay. <laughs> All of our children ended up on the five-year program. Two-point lead for Arizona here. And the, but they were on the, like, Luke was on a scholarship here. So you don't have to worry about paying for the extra year of college. Well, no, that's not the issue. Okay, the, what's the issue? Let's get going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Luke let's, is doing okay for himself. 38 years old. Youngest coach in the NBA. Had a nice career in the NBA I'm, as a I'm player a also. very proud dad. Of all and of your children, lucky. not just Luke. Right. Well, we have four great children, four great daughters-in-law, and nine grandchildren. More coming with every phone call. <laughs> Brandon Williams misses a three. Here's vital. Okay, how about a fast Taylor. break here, please? Bears can run 40 miles an hour. Usain Bolt can only run 27 miles an hour. King McClure, too strong on a three, and a foul going for the rebound underneath. And it's against Emmanuel Acott of Arizona, his first. Two Arizona's winning, Wildcats. not by much. Who's that guy right there? The NBA champions from the Wildcat family here in Tucson. Shine on. Two-point lead for Arizona over Baylor in Tucson tonight. I love Saguaros. Last year, Arizona won the Pac-12, both the regular season and the Pac-12 tournament. But DeAndre the first round great, the they, they got pounded by Buffalo up at Boise. They lost 85% of their scoring. All these guys now playing professionally around the world. But Chase De Jeter comes in as a transfer. Ryan Luther transfers from Pitt. Justin Coleman comes from Samford in Alabama and also Alabama and these great fans here the conference of champions the pride the economic engine in the sport of basketball here 34 straight years have filled this place 52 straight non-conference wins the last loss for those who can't read San Diego State 2011 Steve Fisher making it all happen as Ira Lee snatching the rebound son of a NFL star Zef Lee USC Oakland LA Raiders Who's the greatest basketball playing son of an NFL star? The best player of a NFL player. 
Yeah. Give me a second to think about this. I'll just give you the answer. I'm not waiting okay. around. <laughs> Mackay Mason and this. Grand Hill and Calvin okay. Hill. Yeah. That's Hall true. of Famer Grand Hill. Two-time NCAA champion. Incredible human being. Co-owner of the Atlanta Hawks. One of the most successful business guys making the transition. Joining Magic Johnson, Tony Hawk, Tiger Woods, Roger Staubach. Beautiful play. Power move to the basket. Tristan Clark. Wow. 6'9 sophomore, San Antonio. He leads the country in field goal percentage. He's making over 71% of his shots from the floor. Shot selection. As, as important as partner selection. And King McClure the steal for Baylor. King McClure has not had the type of game that we expected or that Scott Drew and the Baylor Bears need. You ever been to Waco? I have been to Waco. Have you been to Waco? I've been on Interstate 35. Dallas to Austin. I saw the signs. Beautiful <laughs> didn't place. stop, I take it. And a whistle. You know, Willie Nelson. Another foul. Willie I, Nelson. I know who he is, yeah. He went to Baylor for two years. And then things were going well in other directions for him, so he kind of he kind of chased that. And here's some photos of the university. The oldest school in Texas still still operating. That, that place looks beautiful. Wow. So I was shocked to hear that Waco is number two on the top destinations on the rise. This news bulletin came in today. I've been to Kapaha, mm -hmm. Bend, Bol but there this summer riding my bike this spring. Boulder, Castle Boulder. Boulder. Greenville's where Max Johnson, the legend from Auburn, is from. I've been to Lexington. Omaha, we were talking about Omaha this morning, right? What was that what, guy's name? We? Chip, Chip, Chip Hale. Hale. Yeah. Okay. A legend in his own right. We were at the Baja the Cafe National. with Kim. Send it back, Ira Lee. When Ira Lee becomes the star that he's capable of, this Arizona team will be able to compete with anyone in the Pac-12 Conference of Champions. Shot Whoa. clock winding down. Traveling but by the travel on Tristan Clark. Thank you, Tony Padilla. Yes. Don't call foul. Just call traveling and out of bounds. Tuesday, we've got the Cherubundi Boca Raton Bowl between UAB, Cherub the Conference Bundy. USA champs, and the MAC champs, Northern Illinois. A couple of tough defenses squaring off at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. You can watch it from anywhere on the ESPN app. And you know what's amazing, Bill, about UAB? UAB, that's they, Birmingham. Yes, right? okay. Alabama, Birmingham. They cut the football program four years ago, dropped it. Right. Brought it back last year. Yeah, because the alumni complained. And then they win the conference this year. How about well, that? fantastic. Did you watch the Kansas-Villanova game today? I was sitting next to you. Brandon Randolph a three for Arizona. So the game has an interminable finish to it. I mean, I could have spent a day in the pod. And then afterward, they come on with the football game from Albuquerque, where we just were, and it was a beautiful day. I wonder how the Rainbow Riders are doing with the hot air balloons. On up in the balloon, oh, didn't that you? was spectacular. It was so quiet. It was so still. It was so calm. You couldn't tell that you were moving. Beautiful. Tristan Clark to the hoop. Best player. He is so smart. I mean, what a cool dude when you talk to him and learn about his story and everything. His dad played for Tark on the 90 championship team at UNLV. But he's got to realize that Tristan Clark is right-handed, and you can't let a guy go to a strong move. Whoa, Way out there is Randolph. Check. And loose ball diving for it. Vital keeps it alive, and Baylor controls. I love Ira Lee. Look at how tough, how fierce, how willing he is to put his body on the line. That's the hardest thing to find on a team in basketball, is somebody who's going to fight for the ball underneath the basket. you got a ton of pretty boys. They're kind of like, you know, the play-by-play -play guys. <laughs> but who wants to I think to I get take that as a compliment. Yeah, you should. Shot clock winding down, stepping out vital to miss, and the loose ball tracked down. Tristan. Another offensive rebound for Baylor. And isn't that what Sean Miller was complaining about in the Alabama game? 12 offensive rebounds already for Baylor. How's Avery Johnson doing down there? Did you do that Alabama-Arizona game? 
I did not. I was in Phoenix last Sunday. The oh, you had that. The Gonzaga game. You had Tennessee that Tennessee game. Gonzaga yeah. game. You lucky guy. How's Rick Barnes doing? I he love was great. That was a great win for him. I love the desert. Look at this place. Endless, dizzying possibilities. The earth just spinning, spinning free. Coming up, Bill, E-Trade Halftime Report when you get done spinning the globe around. Picture a bright blue ball just spinning, spinning free. Today's notable recaps. Dizzy with College possibility. basketball, that Carolina-Gonzaga game. That was a fun game Who won that game? I missed that score. I was North working Carolina today. won. What well, was the score? So two straight losses for they the They had Zags. over 100 points. Yeah, two straight losses. Okay. From Mark Few and Gonzaga. Still now an excellent team and program. Happy for Roy Williams. A always. great Kansas win. A great Kansas free throw exhibition. Stats and highlights. We've got Kansas well. though next week, and what a spectacular program that is. There it is. is. 103 90 Carolina won. How about Texas, Tennessee, Memphis? Another that must have been a game there. And how about Arizona State coming back good. on the road at Georgia, getting a win? It was Bobby Hurley's 100th career win. So, last year, Bobby Hurley brings the Sun Devils back into relevance. Now, we got to see if they can do that during the conference season because. Once the conference seasons began a year ago, they were really uh, not a factor. Bobby Hurley, just a spectacular addition to the Conference of Champions. Speaking new of players, Bobby Hurley. New players for the Sun Devils. You'll be there next week when they play number one Kansas. That will be terrific. Arena. Got to get the Arizona State basketball fans to fill Wells Fargo out there and show the rest of the world what's happening in the Conference of Champions in the wonderful Valley of the Sun. Tough shot. Please, Brandon, <laughs> pass the ball. <laughs> the bounds to Baylor. Okay, we got a storyline developing here and who can control the boards. Baylor's got 12 offensive rebounds and second, eight second chance points. Arizona, none. I'm shocked. And that's just, what they worked a lot on at shoot around today was rebounding Arizona. And bo boxing out on the defensive glass. I wish they had worked on shooting. I, I don't call it a shoot around anymore. I call it a, a stand around and listen. And that's for all the teams. Beautiful stroke. Matthew Meyer, the miss, and the rebound tip free. Hustle oh, is beautiful pass. Vital. Chase Jeter, though. Anticipation. Justin Coleman attacks for Arizona. Best <laughs> offensive play of the night by any player in this game. And when we talked about best performance of a night, Saturday night, we mentioned Willie Nelson went to Baylor, mm -hmm. didn't finish, but he came back years later. And they were gonna, he was going to give a concert for 1988. It was all set up and everything. In Waco. In, I think on the campus. Concert. Okay. On campus, yeah. Okay. But then the school president, he, he canceled the performance. Something to do with the, the questions about moral fiber. It is a Baptist school. Great pass. Justin Coleman, Martin Luther King was a Baptist. Brandon Williams moves in and a foul. It's on Matthew Meyer of Baylor. So was Roger Williams. Not to be confused with Roger Waters. But <laughs> Roger Williams, who in Rhode Island started the first Baptist church in the Americas. And then Roger Waters, of course, with Pink Floyd. Right. Well, <laughs> please. Let's drop the of course. <laughs> <laughs> Are you surprised I know who Roger Waters was? No. But never assume that anyone knows your life. <laughs> Another miss for Arizona at the line as Brandon Williams misses the front end. Five-point lead for the Wildcats. You're a brilliant guy. He rocks you, right? You don't need any qualifiers. Just lay it out. Go for it. Don't be afraid. I'm afraid every time I sit next to you. <laughs> With good reason. <laughs> I'm not trying to ruin your career, Roxy. Offensive foul, wave it off. Mike's on top of it. Michael Greenstein with a whistle. Flo Thamba called for the offensive foul. So on campus in this beautiful day mm -hmm. in Tucson, the cold front that hit California's southern coast just yesterday, it came here today. And it was in the high 60s. Clouds made all the mountains just look spectacular. And then I got to go and pay homage to the new Lou Olson statue. What a thing. The fundraising spearheaded by Steve Kerr, great coach of the world champion Golden State Warriors. We'll see them on Christmas Day. Warriors, Lakers, LeBron, here we go. And a turnover by Arizona. Pushed the ball. King McClure lost it. 13th Baylor turnover, and McClure is still down. 
Push the ball, spread the floor. You got a man down. If you don't get a layup out of this, we'll send it back. Flo Thamba. Whoa. That's King McClure so, hobbling. It appeared to turn an ankle there, and he's he has to go hobbling to the bench. off the court. He, he should go to the bench there. This, yeah, right there, stepped on the foot of Brandon Randolph. But this guy's tough as can be. He's playing with a heart issue himself. Yeah. And he was told he was never going to play again. And then he went up to the Mayo Clinic up in Minnesota. He had to have some surgery. He's got some devices, defibrillators embedded in his chest that are monitored wirelessly. Just a remarkable advancement in medical technology. Come on, Ira, you can take him. There's nobody that can stop you. Hip free, out of bounds. It belongs to Arizona with 35.1 left in the half. How cool would it be to have your dad be an NFL star and grow up in Inglewood there on the west side of Los Angeles and be able to come over here to play in the Conference of Champions for Sean Miller in the shadow of Lute Olsen statue. Dreams do come true. Shot clock. About a four-second differential with the game clock as Brandon Randolph attacks. What athleticism. And Randolph you know, be, throws it out of bounds. A little behind the back dump pass to Ira Lee for the throw down there. Wide open. You know what also today is? Today's the anniversary of the ratification of the U.S. Bill of Rights, our Constitution. You know, where all humans are created equal. Mm -hmm. Free speech, separation of church and state, right to a speedy and fair trial. That stuff's important. Makai Mason. Oh, the roll. yes. The first Mekhi. half comes to a close. And what that a game we have Baylor. tonight. Down the lane, Makai Mason, a political science major from Yale. Honor student. Now he's getting his graduate degree in sports business management in Baylor and Waco on I-35, halfway between Dallas and Austin. Willie Nelson, Bruce Springsteen, and Makai Mason. The seamless transition. What a game. Three-point game at the half. Coming up the second half, you can find it on ESPN2. The E-Trade Halftime Report. Kevin Connors, Chris Patola is next. Where have we been? They love you here in Tucson. Oh, the Jackalope on the side of the Rialto Theater downtown. My best work there. <laughs> Ride on, hang on, shine on. Moments ago at halftime, you received a prestigious honor, Bill, as they presented you the Academic Hall of Fame with the Dick Enberg Award. The Dick Enberg Award. Dick Enberg was our college broadcaster at UCLA. He became my best friend, and he was just such an incredible human being. And Dick Enberg, he epitomized everything that I believe in and try to stand for. And his, his creative imagination and his sense of nuance and his writing capabilities, the leadership, the ability to pull the team together and do what nobody else could or wanted to do. He was just absolutely a remarkable and friend of, for life. His broadcasting career lasted 60 years. This was a night back in 1994 in Washington, D.C. The Academic All-America Hall of Fame. Some of the most important people in my life, Jack Ramsey, Dick Enberg, Red Auerbach, John Wooden, Morgan Wooten. I'm not sure what I'm doing in that picture, <laughs> but it was a heck of a lot of fun. Do you have a favorite memory of Dick Enberg? Well, the endless memory. 60, you know, he, he broadcast for 60 years. I tell one story a lot, which is early in my broadcasting career, I got the chance to, to broadcast with Dick, and I was terrified. I had no idea what I was doing. I was sure I was going to start stuttering and spitting all over everything and everybody. And like looked, you do every night. Right, like I still do all the time. And he looked at me and he said, Bill, you look terrible. I said, I don't belong here. And then Dick, he reached over and patted me on the leg, and he said, Billy, don't worry about a thing. That producer's counting us down, and as we get to three, two, one, that red light's going to come on, and 35 million people are going to be hanging <laughs> on every word you say. Thanks a lot, Dick. I love you, Dick. I miss you. Barbara, what an angel. This is, wow. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I knew Dick Enberg. I now am still friends with Barbara Enberg.
phenomenal wife. Justin what a game Coleman here. gives Arizona their largest lead of the night. He has seven to lead the Wildcats. It's been an offensive nightmare here. It's been a nightmare on the boards. Baylor has dominated the glass. Plus 16 on the first half. The problem is they had 13 turnovers in the first half. Tristan Clark, who okay, has so three fouls, now with six points. So back-to-back -back successful offensive execution. Imagine if the entire practice sessions this morning had been spent on offense. That's where this game is going to be won. Ask the Golden State Warriors. They are one of the greatest teams in the history of the sport. They're three-time champions in the last four years. They should have been four out of four. And a foul away from the ball. Chase Jeter called for his third. And we're just over a minute into the second half. So how many points does Tristan Clark have? He has six tonight. Okay. So why is Chase Jeter spending so much time trying to deny him reception of the ball? He does average 14 points per game and does okay. lead the team in scoring. Okay. So let's see if he's hot tonight. But he's got back-to-back -back baskets here, right? Mark Vidal. Well, that was vital for Baylor. And you got to wonder... How King McClure is doing considering he turned his ankle late in the first half. This is the best I've ever seen the Baylor Bears play. Bill, it's the first time you've seen Baylor play. Both of those statements are true. <laughs> King McClure, let's get hot. I asked him if his sister's name was Queen. <laughs> or Princess? He looked at me like I was crazy. How everybody looks at you. Shot clock inside 10. Here's Makai Mason. Great ball fake. And Mason ties the game. Why couldn't the game start like this tonight? Why did they wait and waste the first 20 minutes? Please. What does ESPN stand for? Entertainment and Sports Programming Network. Brandon Randolph, the corner three. Sal was three for basketball. Randolph. Now they're living up to the charge that the band gave us here tonight under the direction of Chad Shoup. Just a young guy, Chad, but what a band they have here. And that pregame atmosphere is just absolutely spectacular. The players program, 72 NBA draft picks here at Arizona. Reaching Fallon Randolph, his second. With the great ball movement, swing the ball, no hesitation. Those NBA draft picks, that does not include... Alonzo Trier, who went undrafted, shockingly, but he just signed a $7 million two-year contract. He was on a two-way with the Knicks, and he just signed the largest contract in the history of an undrafted rookie in the NBA, while still a rookie. Congratulations, Alonzo. Open look for Makai Mason. Look at that tip out. These Bears are scrambling. They're fighting. Another offense. Mason knocks this one down, and Baylor has tied the game at 29. What a game. An offensive masterpiece. You know, they had the new Ring of Honor ceremonies this year to start the season here at McHale. DeAndre Ayton and Jared Bayless went in. Luke Walton's up there. Yes, he is. DeAndre Ayton, what a player. Last year, I mean, it was just, we, it was such, so much fun calling his games. What a personality. Looking forward to the Phoenix Suns getting back into the mix at the top of the NBA. Changing defenses here. Don't waste so much time getting into what you want. Deep three way off from Justin Coleman as Baylor looking for the lead. They need to get somebody to play that high post position. Whoa, offensive foul. And the fourth on Mario Kegler. Rather the third, check that, third foul on Kegler. And another charge drawn by Chase Jeter. That's now 17 on the season. So this is Mario Kegler, right? Yes. Okay. Call for the offensive foul. So Mario Kegler. He was dunking when he was in the sixth grade at 5'10". He had an older brother that challenged him because he was getting his shot blocked all the time. Soon afterwards, in the seventh and eighth grade, he added the windmills in the 360s. And then in high school, he started dunking from behind the free throw line, and he would line up players and jump over them. He got to four, jumping over four different people, and he finally said, that's enough. I'm going to start working on my jumpers. Loose ball. Great Alex play. Alex Marcello tracks it down. Here comes Arizona. Brandon Williams, intangibles. When was the first time you dunked? 
Eighth grade. Eighth grade. How tall were you in the eighth grade? 5'10". 6'1 in ninth grade. 6'7 and a half in tenth grade. 6'9 as a junior. 6'10 and a half as a senior in high school. And then 6'11 as a freshman at UCLA. And then what happened? I stopped getting measured. <laughs> <laughs> Send it back! And oh, a foul please, of that Jeter. Oh. That's his fourth. Oh, my gosh. So with 15.49 to go, Chase Jeter. Four fouls, 29 all. Arizona and Baylor. So Chase Jeter, the master of drawing charges, although he's got four fouls in this game of 15.49 to play. But now 17 charges drawn this season by the transfer from Duke, Chase Jeter, including four in this game against Auburn. You've got nothing to say about charges, Bill? I'm not into charges. <laughs> You're into scoring. You're into offense. But this oh, is great defense no, by not. Chase Jeter. Yes, yes, here's the rules. He's drawing a charge within the rules. Do you think that James Naismith in 1891, this, the anniversary will be next Saturday, the 21st of December, when he invented the game of basketball. Do you think that he said, I want this game to be about guys out there just falling backwards? Do you think he was had the thoughts of the three-point line when he invented the game? No, the it rules change, and they should exactly. change that rule, and they should not call the charges like that. Free throw and missed by Mark Vidal, who's now 0 for 3 at the line. I believe in evolution, not devolution. Well, evolving is part of the game, and the defense has evolved, and the charge has come along with the, with the evolvement of basketball. What was the score of the first basketball game? Were you there? No, it was in 1891. What was the final score? Were you there? No. <laughs> the score, final score was one nothing. They had to call. They called the game as soon as somebody scored. They started out nine on nine, right? And then the next day they changed the rules because it was too rough. And the evolution and of basketball, right, is the charge is part of it. And I think and the evolution is a is. positive thing. Mandel Acott missing the three. Great. Loose ball out of bounds. Last touch by Baylor. Great pass by Eman Acott to Ryan Luther. Just right off the rim, you glance it to it. He's wide open coming along that baseline. Good things happen. Eman Acott, you know, he's got a real nice body. Doesn't have the explosiveness that Raleigh Alkins had. You know, Raleigh could just soar. And Acott came to Arizona early, actually reclassified, and came a year early into school. What do you mean reclassified? Is that like your draft status? Well, his academic status in high school. He got the coursework done to come into college a year early. You're not old enough to know what a reclassified draft status is. <laughs> Beautiful penetration and dish. Ira Lee, yes. Arizona reclaims the lead. Inside 15 minutes to play, and a lot of new faces. For Baylor has been second chance points tonight. Outscoring Arizona 13 nothing on second chance points as Mason missed another missing a three. offensive rebound. Makai Mason tracked it down. Poor matchups defensively. Devontae Bandu with a jumper for Baylor. And two more second chance points. Rebounds are a result of your defense. And you guard your man away from the, the ball, away from the basket. You force him to come away. Then as the ball is shot, then you turn, and that is your blockout. Oh, man. Alex Barcelo. One of the great shooters in all of college basketball. Spent all of his summer here in Tucson working with Chris Rounds. A great strength and conditioning coach here. Working on his game. Magnificent shooter. Taylor again looking to take the lead. They led early in this one. Love the way Makai Mason runs this team from out in front. Mario Kegler the putback on the second chance. And Baylor goes in front. Wow. Who would have ever thought? This guy, Scott Drew, four years older than Bryce. Dana, the daughter, is in the middle. Three children in the Drew family. The winningest family, third winningest family 
of coaches in the history of college basketball. Alex Barcelo in and out, wow. and Baylor clears. And rebound. The rebound. Push the ball if you're the Bears. They're growling. The Wildcats are whimpering. And a foul to the hoop. It's all Baylor right now. 17 of Baylor's 33 tonight, Bill, have come on second chance points. Look at the limp, though, for Makai Mason. I mean, that's a tough way to go through life. I mean, he's a young guy. He's trying to gut it out any way he can. He's yeah, battled so many injuries in his career. He doesn't practice. He should probably just stop right now. And that's what I would advise him to do. Just say, okay. Is just stop playing? Just stop playing. You're going to need that leg the rest of your life. You didn't stop playing. Well, I'm about the dumbest guy you've ever come across. <laughs> <laughs> you notice I'm silent right now. Well, I'm guilty of everything. So Mark Vidal, Bill, he has 14 rebounds. Arizona as a team only has 13. Look at Mason. Wow. Fights off retirement rumors and just comes out and throws a runner in, in the face of the swarming Wildcat defense. 14 for Mason and Baylor has their largest lead of the night. Finally, some good ball movement and a great ball fake. And Ira Lee is a shot blocked out of bounds by Vital. So one of the things about this Baylor team, they play an incredible schedule. I mean, they're in the Big 12, and so they're at Kansas, they're at Texas Tech, they're at K-State, they're at Iowa State. They're not going to be intimidated by this massive crowd here tonight. Some new faces. The students are not in session here, so they've sold this Arizona Zoo tickets. Wow, what a rebound. Tristan Clark pushed the ball. And it's been a subdued crowd tonight, and Arizona really hasn't gotten into a flow offensively. Mason again. And now 16 for Makai Mason, and a six-point lead for Baylor. That is T.J. McConnell. Eight straight for the Bears. Timeout. Sean Miller and the Wildcats. And these fans are stunned, pushed back in their seats. We talked about Arizona's success here at home. Baylor's had early season success as well. In December... Back to 2013, they're 28 and 1 against unranked opponents in the month of December. Well, Makai Mason for Baylor, so tough trying wow. to gut it out, playing through numerous injuries and giving Scott Drew everything he's got. Limps off the court, they bring him back, starts knocking down threes, but more importantly, he's hitting the runners in the lane. That's John Stockton, that's Steve Nash, and as all great point guards have to be able to do, the threat of the offensive attack. And it's the offense for these Baylor Bears who are now just, they're on the verge of one of the great wins in program history. This has been a spectacular run, 16 years now for Scott Drew. And the story of his family to have your dad as a legendary coach for all those years, the same way that Sean Miller had his dad as a legendary coach up in Pittsburgh. Can Sean Miller get his Wildcats get going offensively? How many, how many points do they have here in the second half? In the Turn second half, again. they have eight. Eight points in eight minutes, which pretty much matches the pace that they had in the first half. It's been a struggle for them offensively, and Mason is the guy that's leading the charge here for Baylor. The grad transfer from Yale. But it's also the toughness. The toughness that Scott Drew was begging for, pleading for in practice this morning. And then he had number 15, Obim Okeke, lead the team prayer. And a foul out top on Brandon Williams. And that team prayer this morning was basically, let's go out and kill him. Love the prayers. That Arizona's 52 game home court winning streak against non-conference opponents in jeopardy. to the arms of the saguaro cacti which take a hundred years to grow just the arms but Baylor right now they're showing the arms and the claws and the teeth of a fighting bear here the Wildcats can't do anything the rebounds the ball they're all bouncing the Bears ways but they have made their own opportunities sticking with it the persistence the perseverance and the discipline to get the job done the rebounds goodness gracious 17 offensive rebounds leading to an equal number of points 
And Arizona, they normally dominate the boards. That's the tenet of their foundational pillars of who they are. When they out-rebound their opponents, they win 200 times and only losing 38 times in the last 10 years. Tonight, they're down 24. They are not going to win the rebound margin. Mark Vidal has 14 rebounds for Baylor. Arizona is 14 as a team, now make it 15 as Dylan Smith clears the mix. One player has as many rebounds as the entire Arizona team? Correct. Ira Lee trying to be active, but he's on the bench right now as Chase Jeter comes back with his four but, fouls. But nobody from the Wildcats is able to handle the ball at the high post. Foul is on Vital, his second. Let's give credit to Scott Drew over here, though, for controlling the terms of this conflict dictating how it's going to all be played out and his family story there homer drew and his mom janet you know early on that homer was a, an assistant coach down at lsu with dale brown and he was gone all the time as assistant coaches are and so he came home one night the family thought he was a burglar <laughs> and so they said they sat down and janet said this, this has got to change and so homer he changed he, he went and became a, a coach back in Indiana, and they stayed there forever. Finally. Dylan Smith with a three, his first points of the night. Offense, one of two players, Dylan Smith, from the state of Alabama, one of the reasons they went back and played there. Justin Coleman is the other one. And the crowd trying to get into it here at McHale. These great fans. And a foul called, and Matthew Meyer will go to the line for the Baylor Bears. Drive to the hoop, be willing to absorb the contact. Matthew Meyer from Austin, Texas. Willie Nelson. It's Luther a long Ryan story. John Miller was in a great mood at practice today. He's been coaching for 29 years, 50 years old. Started right out of playing at Pittsburgh for Paul Evans. Well, it's okay if you block the ball as long as you don't smash the guy in the face with your elbow. That's what you did to people. That's fine. They called it. They called a foul on me when I did that. Should I get Swen Nader on the phone all the times you did it to him in practice? <laughs> Swen started with no game, and by the time he left, he was the best center I played against in all of college basketball, and he was the only player to get drafted in the NBA. In the first round, he never started a college game while playing high school, you know, while playing college basketball. And went on to an incredible career. And one of Coach Wooden's favorite players ever. Tough pass. You gotta make a better swing of the ball up there. Nice. That's double dribble. And it's called in a turnover on Arizona. So Chase Jeter, who had the fantastic game against Alabama, just not had any opportunities. It, Foul's a big problem for him. Here. Arizona is going to have to work on their offense and how they're going to attack the zone because anybody who watches this game is going to say, look, we're just going to pack it in against the Wildcats. Jeter's only taken three shots tonight. How do you attack the zone? You How have get to have somebody who can handle the ball at the high post. Great defense, Chase Jeter. Here come the Wildcats. Let it fly. Brandon Williams missing a three as Devontae Bandu the rebound. Here comes Baylor. The position defense that these Baylor Bears play with. Right. This is a very good team. Foul out top called against Arizona. Kick off your week 15 NFL Sunday with ESPN at 10 Eastern. Sam and the guys will have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, preview each game. Right up until kickoff and like everything else, it's live on the ESPN app so you can watch from anywhere. I love the ESPN app. <laughs> Airports, hotels, you can watch what you want, which is ESPN, entertainment and sports. How about a salute to all the great players in the history of Baylor basketball. Vinnie Johnson, Torian Prince, Brian Skinner, Terry Teagle, Michael Williams, the free throw champion forever, David Wesley, and then Dennis Lindsay, who's now the general manager of the Utah Jazz in the NBA.
One and two for Mason. His son, Jake, is a player on this team. He's sitting out this year with some injuries. I saw him today at practice. It was terrific. Long three rattles in, and Dylan Smith hit a couple here for Arizona. And we've got a two-point game. What a layoff there by Matthew Fair. Mario Kegler for the Bears. What's that guy's name again? Matthew Meyer with the pass? Yeah, Meyer. How do you tell the difference between Meyer and Mayer? Because I asked him what it was. spelled the same way. But how does he pronounce it? Well, uh, the floater falls off from Justin Coleman. Offense is the hardest part of basketball. Defense is effort. Basketball is not about strategy. It's about skill. Talent, developing skill, physical fitness. And all these shots that are just missing badly by the Wildcats. Whoa. Kegler lost the ball. That's not exactly how they drew that one. Brandon Williams goes one on one at Mason. And a block is called on Makai Mason, his second. And Brandon Williams will go to the line with 828 for Arizona. They're down four. And I know you don't like charges. What do you think of this play? So, well, what did they have? A one on four fast break? How about just let it go? The guy's standing there. The guy's running away. His shoulder's outside. So you would have just said play on, play even on. though there was. Clear he's contact. going to his left. Why, why bail him out? There's four saying, not different a shooting foul. It'll be out of bounds for the Wildcats. It's a hockey line change. What's that? In hockey? You What's only go that? for about 40 to 45 seconds. That's all you play And then you sub, you? yes. You're kidding. And then the next group comes in. What Line change is five on the, on the ice, like five mm -hmm. on the floor here. You ever called a hockey game? I have called a hockey game before. Really? You play hockey? I do play hockey. With who? With other people? With other guys? Like with Wayne Gretzky? Not with Wayne Gretzky. I'd, I'd like to play with Wayne Gretzky. What's our friend from Apple's name who, who, who plays hockey? What's his name again? Oh, Guy Kawasaki? Guy, yeah. That he guy. plays with me. Well, he, he, <laughs> that's about as cool a guy as you ever meet. You ever heard him speak? I have heard him speak. Wow. What a history. What a story. Brandon Williams way off. Out of bounds. Baylor ball. And that's, not the quite, that's not quite the way you draw up an offensive sequence there. I mean, they're trailing, and, and you're going to dribble away from the basket to shoot a fadeaway three. It's been a struggle right for both player. sides offensively. Arizona just 35%. Baylor's, Baylor's at 40%. Baylor's playing better, and they're rebounding, and they believe, and they're not intimidated by this great crowd. Out rebounding Arizona 41 16. Penetration and dish, championship style. Mario Kegler, a corner three, and Baylor has their largest lead of the night. Just the second three for Kegler. Didn't play the first six games of the year. Was serving a suspension for a violation of team rules, but he's come out and hit a big shot, giving Baylor a seven-point lead. Two years ago, the Baylor Bears were the number one team in the country. And now, with a completely different roster, they have come into the pride of the Conference of Champions, Tucson, Arizona, and they are outplaying the Wildcats here on their court, where the Wildcats rarely lose. History on the line, Bears growling, arr, arr. Baylor leading Arizona by seven. Thursday, we'll have the college basketball game of the night on ESPN 2, 7 Eastern. Texas Tech against Zion Williamson and number two Duke at Madison Square Garden. The first matchup between the two schools. You can always catch it on the ESPN app from anywhere. And here's a sample of Earn Everything, an inside look at the Duke program on ESPN+. Plus. This is the first official practice, okay? So it's the beginning of the race. It's a long race. You know, five guys playing as one, what we've said about being a fist all the time. And for me, I like to believe in destinations. So we're starting a journey. Where do we want to end? You know, we want to end in April, and we want to be on a stage 
and we want to be accepting a national championship trophy. One of the great coaches of anything ever. Mike Krzyzewski, just absolutely spectacular. The winningest coach at one school, the winningest coach overall, 14 ACC tournament championships, five national titles. For one stretch there, they made the final four six out of eight years with two championships. Some of the best teams, some of the best players, and what he did for our national team, resurrecting it from the depths. Wow. And when we were in Maui, we had the chance to spend some. You were there, right? No, I wasn't. Hmm. You were there with Jason. Who? Jason. Jason okay. Benetti. I don't know. He never. He, every time I talked to that guy, he gave me a different name. <laughs> but anyway, we had a great talk with Coach K there. And, and what Coach K relayed to us about what he learned coaching the best players in the world at the professional level. Oh, please. Stick a fork in it. That was a great pass. I love Baylor's post-feeding skills. But Coach K was talking about how he wanted at the beginning to have two-a-day practices, right? So Kobe and LeBron and Dwayne Wade and all the guys, they come to him and say, we don't need two-a-days. Give us the time to work on our own game. We'll go one day, we'll give you once a day, we'll give you everything we have, but then don't make the practices too long so that we can work on our own individual stuff. And then when Coach K agreed to that and then watched the guys play and practice on their own after the team stuff, he said, wow, a great lesson in life to be learned. Listening, adjusting, making other people better at what they do. That's Coach K. I mean, he, you know, he, he's right there with Phil Jackson and Pat Riley and Greg Popovich in, in, in the modern world here. In this game specifically, speaking of making it better, offensively, what has Arizona got to do? Create shots. They're not getting good shots. They're not taking enough shots. Four fouls on Mario Kegler, by the way. Anybody can make open shots, but who can create shots? That's a very difficult shot, executing the, the same shot that you just faked. We saw some film of him, Chase Jeter, of the game he had against Alabama. The best I'd ever seen him play with the moves and the execution. He played for Coach K. How long was he at Duke? Duke? Two years. Sat out last year as a transfer oh. to Arizona. as a foul on Ryan Luther of the Wildcats. That's his fourth. And Baylor's in the bonus, so a one and one for Mark Vidal, who has struggled from the line tonight. He is 0 for 4 at the line. Two points, 14 rebounds for Luther tonight. Or rather for Vidal, I should say. Now, when Dennis Rodman did that, you didn't criticize him for that. I'm staying on the positive side. I choose light over darkness. What was your name again? But how about this guy, Scott Drew? Over the last eight years, there's only been eight coaches who's taken their teams throughout the entire country. Well, another miss from the free throw line. They're going to put the Bears back on the line. And a oh foul. It's on Brandon Randall for the Wildcats. How many free throws has that guy Kegler missed tonight? He's now. Oh, and that's not Kegler. That was Vital. He was Vital now for five. To tell me the difference between Vital and Kegler. This is my first Baylor They're game. They're two different people. Okay. Kegler's number four. Okay. Vital's number eleven. Okay. And this is King McClure who is scoreless tonight. And he's the guy who we <laughs> picked up. Uh, to spotlight in the open right he's played well so far this season struggled offensively tonight it's been Makai Mason who leads Baylor with 17 a super nice guy King McClure from Dallas had a chance to spend some time with the team at practice today and it just makes you believe in tomorrow when you spend time with these young student athletes five-point lead for Baylor and a 52-game home court non-conference winning streak in jeopardy for the Wildcats. What's the all-time winning streak home court? Were you a History. part of it? No. It's never lost a home game. Though. It takes a lot of time. Catch to Kentucky at 129. The roll goes for Tristan Clark. Speaking of your career, do you know where you were 45 years ago tonight? What's today's date? December 15th. 45 years ago tonight, December 15th. I'll give you a clue. St. Louis, Missouri. 
Oh, yes. Brandon we, Randolph, the miss. We beat North Carolina State, but then lost to him in the Final Four. So, what a, what a waste. Ira Lee comes up empty, and King McClure the rebound. Be at your best when your best is needed. What a disgrace. <laughs> what a pathetic excuse. You were in foul trouble that night, by yes, the way. Yes, I was, and Sven Nader carried us. And Dave, how about Jamal Dave, Wilkes? Dave Myers carried us. Jamal Wilkes carried us. John Wooden carried us. And when it was my turn, I was a no-show. What an embarrassment. The stain and stigma on my soul. Shot clock winding down. Mason the pull-up, yeah. and he oh. banked it in. What 19 for Makai Mason. Please say a prayer. Give this guy good legs for as long as possible. Baylor by nine, Sean just Miller. over four Cannot minutes to go. It. And Arizona has only 39 points tonight. That's not a good enough. Makai Mason has been playing fantastic, spectacular. Playing like TJ McConnell, like John Stockton. What a player. Our Week 15 Monday Night Football matchup of the NFC South. A battle in Charlotte. Drew Brees, the 11-2 Saints, have already clinched the division. This past Sunday, now look for home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Cam Newton, Christian McCaffrey, and the Panthers, who are desperate to keep their playoff hopes alive. 8-15 Eastern on ESPN. ESPN Deportes, available on the ESPN app, so you can watch from anywhere. Our coverage begins Monday Night Countdown at 6. Monday Night Countdown is served by Applebee's. Chad Shoup, they're directing and leading the band, just a youngster himself, but this band is terrific. You know who is also terrific is Drew Brees for the New Orleans Saints. Wow. I remember when they told him he wasn't good enough to have a future. Now he's the all-time leading passer in the history of football, right? He does good. play football, right? What a leader. And right now, the Arizona Wildcats look leaderless here in the presence of school president Bobby Robbins in his second year here, sitting next to Dr. Mike Dake, who runs all the hospital and health care services here at the U of A. Mike Dake, who was Indiana Mr. Basketball at South Bend Central High. Great pass. Shot clock. What a play. Mark Vidal cleans it up, and it's Baylor by 11. And something that I thought I would never see. During that last timeout, some of these loyal fans here got up and walked out here. And a three knocked in by Dylan Smith. He's got three threes tonight. Ton of time here left for the Wildcats. But unless they get at least one rebound the rest of this game, they're not going to win. Timeout here. The Bears can't even get the ball up court. Timeout, Arizona getting out-rebounded 45-18. 30-second timeout for Baylor. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Fans, this is the moment you truly all been waiting for. Well, the story tonight for Baylor and Scott Drew has been second chance points and offensive rebounding and just dominating the glass tonight. And the ability of Scott Drew to make his players believe when it wasn't going well in the first half. And now they've found their rhythm and they're playing great ball. And that is a dagger out of the timeout when it looked like Baylor was just totally up against it. I figured Butler it out. With the bucket. I figured it out. You know, Bears, they hibernate. We've had a lot of stories about Hart and guys who have the health problems and challenges tonight, like King McClure. Brandon Randolph with the hoop for the Wildcats. So when Bears, who normally have a 40 beats per minute heart rate, when they hibernate, their heart rate goes down to 8 beats per minute. Mason diving gets a timeout before getting tied up by Brandon Williams and saves the possession with 220 to play as Arizona again the 52 game home non-conference winning streak in real jeopardy now down eight with 220 to go and for Baylor they're hoping the 500th game is for Scott Drew as the Baylor head coach is a memorable one and Makai Mason has led the charge tonight for the Baylor Bears. But it's the culture, it's the foundation that these Baylor Bears have believed in. As Makai had to go to the locker room early in the game, and then he came back. I mean, I, I want to know what's going on in that locker room, and I want some of that. 
But the jumpers, the runners, the passing, the leadership, the diving on the ball to regain possession, the presence of mind to look at the ref and know that we got no chance whatsoever. Possession is critical. What's the timeout situation down the stretch here? So one aside, one for Baylor, okay, one for good, Arizona. Good. That'll mean that we won't break the Villanova Kansas record from this afternoon for the longest last minute of a game. When I'm told I have one minute to live, I want to spend it at a college basketball game. And get a 30-second timeout in there? No. <laughs> I know I'll still have time to do whatever I need to get done. <laughs> Foul on Baylor, and it's on King McClure. 17 so, fouls, so Arizona at the line for a one and one with 2-11 remaining. This guy, Scott Drew, who's four years older than Bryce. Bryce was chosen 16th in the draft. You know, that means you're the 16th best non-professional player coming into the world, and that is a great honor. Chase Jeter at the stripe. 0 for 2 tonight. Whoa, free throws, rebounds. And another rebound for Baylor. Not Arizona a good a sign to tonight. Not a good showing for the Conference of Champions. And now they get a foul on Dylan Smith. Speaking well, of Conference of Champions. Yeah. Stanford right won us tonight. On ESPN2, congratulations to the Stanford Women's Volleyball program winning their eighth national championship. And that extends, the most. that extends Stanford's lead over UCLA for the most championships of all time. It also extends the Conference of Champions lead over the Big Ten, which is of an insurmountable nature. And it's the 16th volleyball championship for the Pac-12. UCLA has in some 38 of those. years. Okay. UCLA has four. But Stanford now has eight. USC is three, and Washington has the other. Now, are you only counting the women's there? Yeah, that's only women. Yeah, I'm calling okay. women's. Okay, so that's what Stanford won tonight. The women's. Okay. UCLA is, is, is you know, they had Al Skates, who won like 1,200 games over 50 years. You talk about records. Inside two minutes, and it's a nine-point game. Great Brandon runner Randall. by Brandon Randolph. Arizona with 12. When you're in desperation mode, as the Wildcats are, and you make a basket, don't run back on defense. Don't turn your head. No, get up there and face guard your man. This guy, Makai Mason. Now, best I've ever seen him play. Have you seen him play before? No, I just met him this morning. Yale. Yale beat Cal Berkeley this year in China. They did beat Pac Cal in China. China game. And actually, Mason had a career high 31 while playing for Yale against Baylor in the NCAA tournament. Okay. Don't try to just kill clock here because the Wildcats are going to start letting threes go. And if two of them go down in succession, we got a ball game. Arizona needs some urgency. They get it inside. Oh. Jeter, the kick out. Brandon Williams. Missing a three, and the rebound, Mario Kegler. Chase Jeter has to shoot that ball. Throw the ball up the court. And Kegler is fouled in the backcourt, 50 seconds remaining. Did you watch Villanova play today? For the second and time, Bill, I was sitting next to you when we were watching. Okay. But the, the, the way that Kansas beat the clock by moving the ball and, and, and just taking the, 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 the clock out of the game. But when you look at what Scott Drew has done here tonight, and you, and you think about all the different things that he has done in the company that he's in, over the last eight years, only eight coaches have taken their teams to two Elite Eights and two Sweet Sixteens. And you know who the other seven guys are besides Scott Drew? Coach Cade, Jim Beheim, Roy Williams, Tom Izzo, John Calipari, Bill Self. Those are all Hall of Famers. The other two guys are the coaches tonight. Sean Miller, who's 50, and Scott Drew, who is the youngest of them all at 46 years of age. This guy's got an incredible future. I was inspired today. I was taken aback and caught off guard by the prayer. That I was. Brandon Randolph hits a three. In Last timeout. Time Last Six time out. Six-point game. And Baylor, speaking of their success, they've been to the postseason, Bill, a school record seven straight years. What's the overall record for anybody ever? You tell me. No idea. That's why I asked you. What's your name again? Dave. So, 
One of the great stories about about the uh, Baylor Bears mm -hmm. is the guy from a couple years ago, Isaiah Austin, the seven-footer, big guy from the Bears. Yes. This was back in 2014 when he was diagnosed. He was This guy was heading for stardom in the NBA. He's playing in China now, by right. the way. Yeah, so they found out about this, and then he didn't. He wasn't allowed to play in the NBA. The doctor said, you can't do this. And so it was crushed, and the NBA stepped in and helped him out a little bit at the beginning, and then he just said, you know, he's got Marfan syndrome, so he went over to China where the rules are a little different. And he's playing and just doing fantastic. We can only hope that it lasts. Isaiah, good health to you. And you know, his, his dad played in the Conference of Champions. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, played at Arizona State. What was his name? Well, Isaiah Austin. Right. Play Alex Austin. Alex Austin. Yeah. Okay. No. What years? He was there. I want to say in the late '80s, Arizona State. Okay. Teams ranked every season over the last ten years: Baylor, Duke, Gonzaga, Kansas. Yes, I can read. Pass the eye test one more time. Louisville, Kentucky, Michigan State, Mike Bray. What a coach. Roy Williams. That is an elite group. Turnover off the inbound. Williams for Arizona with a steal. And it's out of bounds of the Wildcats. 41 wow. seconds remaining and Baylor with a costly turnover. That's why you throw the ball up the court. Get a big guy out there who can look over the defender. Be on the move. Be ready as the referee is handing that ball to the inbound passer. You can't just stand around and wait for the game of life to come to you. Come on. Arizona needs to go quick. Williams long three. And the rebound controlled by Great Baylor. Outlet. The outlet here comes Attack. Hill. Attack. Tell you, this guy, Tristan Clark. Six to go. The rebounding. Tristan Clark. Vital. Kegler. In the guard play. Makai Mason. Problem for Baylor is they're just 7 for 16 from the line. Problem. They're winning. But they got to try to put this game away. And Arizona shot only six free throws tonight. And they've made just two. You care about winning or you care about the point spread? You're like a fantasy player? What are you doing? I care about the ball <laughs> game. So Vital will go to the line. He is 0 for 5 from the line tonight. Explain the intentional foul rule to me and what that means and why they're So they're determining this. if this is just a common foul or should be upgraded to a flagrant one which would mean that there was no play but, on the ball. Well, there's no play on the ball. A flagrant foul just means that's something that's uncalled for. That's what you have to do. And if it is a flagrant one, that was all after the foul. But if it is a flagrant one deemed against Brandon Williams, that'll mean two free throws for Vital and Baylor will get the ball. And so, the foul, so again, it was ruled a common foul on Brandon right. Williams. So what's flagrant about that? Just a common foul is the ruling from our officials. Excellent. Tony Padilla, John Crew Higgins, tonight. and Michael Greenstein tonight. Baylor has spent too much time trying to kill the clock as opposed to continuing their attack. Their offense in the second half has been superior to Arizona's. Well, Arizona's shot 36% in the second half. And this is a great reaffirmation of my love for Neon. <laughs> I didn't know anything about Baylor coming into this game other than it was in Waco. Well, that's some things I knew, but, but I sure have been impressed with this young coach. Take a free throw, please. He is 0 for 6 now at the line. Mark Vidal tonight. Sophomore from Baylor, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Baylor, this is the ninth time these two teams have played. 5 and 3, Arizona's favor coming in. Baylor has never won in Tucson. Can they extend this lead? Finally, vital. Yes, signs of life. Seven-point game. Tough pull-up three. Randolph. Look at the long rebounding. Makai Mason. And Test a foul ball, will put please. Mason at the line. It's on Brandon Williams. And Baylor has just been everywhere on the glass tonight. And Arizona has just looked flat with their performance. You have to come out to attack every single game, every single moment, and the ability to be fresh. 
We heard reports and rumors that the Wildcats were playing better after a disappointing stint in Maui, where they beat Iowa State. They were ahead of Gonzaga until Chase Jeter had two fouls on the same play in a 32-point swing of a game that the Zags finally won. And then they got beat by Auburn. Auburn is a very good basketball team. Mason makes both. He has 22 tonight. So and the 52-game home court non-conference winning streak will fall at the hands of the Baylor Bears. Whoa. As the rebound, another one for Mark Vidal, who has 16 rebounds in the game. A stunning turn of events, but congratulations. Baylor has been the better team tonight. And the people here in Tucson are stunned. The Conference of Champions pushed back in their seats. And it's the Big 12 that reigns supreme tonight on ESPN. Entertainment, sports, Saturday night. So for Scott Drew, a memorable night. His 500th game as the Baylor coach. And they knock off Arizona by a final of 58-49. to 49. For Bill Walton, Roxy Bernstein coming up next, the New Mexico Bowl.